She's been in superb form tonight. Two metres one, Nicola McDermott, Olympic silver medalist. There you go. Somebody's going to go very, have to go very high tonight to beat this young lady. The Australian in top form. It's just a lovely rhythm, Tim. You know, she comes in every time is the same, and then at the moment, everything looks so straightforward, so easy. Firstly, uh, where's your silver medal? Whereabouts in the room? Here it is, next to me. Oh, we got it right there. Ah, oh, have a look at that baby. <laughs> Has that sunk in? You're the most successful Australian track and field athlete in Tokyo. Yeah, and all, all of this season, I don't think it's really going to sink in until I'm back on the Central Coast. I think that's when it's going to hit. Is that night still vivid for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... um. I, I've I've shared the story, I think, even more than what I've reflected in my own time. But um, that that night was just magic. Um, there was there was lots uh, of events going on. There was lots of finals, so there was a big buzz in the village, and people were already celebrating the end of their um, yeah, like the, the the end of their their Olympic success and. Yeah, so I, I just remember being there and I knew I was positioned on the, like the, I think the best day of the Olympics is right at the end when um, the whole team is ready just to support you. And yeah, I, I was excited. On the international broadcast, they showed you warming up and you walked yeah. over to your coach and said, I'm coming in at 189. And I thought then Nicola feels extremely confident at the moment because yeah, a lot of girls jumped the earlier height, but you came in later. Yeah, so Matt and I, we, we saw even in the qualifying that I was in very good shape. And it was now getting to the tactics because the other girls there had performed on the international stage. They, I was surrounded by medalists for European championships, for uh, world indoor championships, for Olympic Games previously. So I knew my greatest tactic i think is the confidence that i take into the to the field that when i jump from the very start it's going to be a good quality jump i don't need to have many attempts to get into the shape and um i'd never jumped at 189 as a starting height before but we thought if you want to jump higher than you ever have you probably have to start higher than you ever have so we took that that gamble and um yeah i'm, I'm very happy that i stuck to that because already when i when I was getting over that um, that first height, it was it was already an achievement, and it wasn't going to be easy. That's my that was my mindset. This is not an easy competition today. Like, this is going to require absolutely everything. So you have to take every decision with that in mind. There was almost an enormous upset. Maria Lasitskina almost goes out at one ninety six. Were, were you watching at that moment or? Were you so focused on your own performance and also writing down in your journal or did you watch her take her third attempt? Yeah, no, I, um, it was actually quite a long competition for us. We were out there for hours and I don't really get caught up with uh, when people are making it and when people aren't making it. I wasn't, I wasn't concerned when she was attempting third attempt because I knew she is a fighter and she has done She's done it many times before where she's just about out at a lower height and then jumps almost a world record. So um, I wasn't going to try and, and predict. I was just conserving my energy and just, um, just keeping focused on what I needed to do. Do you know you uh, captured the imagination of the nation by going to your journal after every jump? I mean, are you aware of just how... Um, how that was received back home? It wasn't until I, to be honest, I burst these girls every every few days when I'm on the on the circuit. So, um, and I don't usually draw much media attention. So for the Olympics, in a way, since I wasn't on social media, it wasn't until after that I realised just how big the Olympics is. <laughs> um, 
the notebooks oh everyone what's in that notebook what what is she writing down and notebook companies coming like throwing deals at me you know we want to have you use our notebook and um it, it was just it was so much fun uh just to see the yeah the, the hype about about it and all the athletes on the circuit they tell me oh you're the one with the notes <laughs> uh, everyone everyone knows me as like that girl that writes notes um which is so funny because that's only one minor part of my big um my big preparation but I'm excited that it inspired people for sure <laughs> tell me you signed a multi-million dollar deal with one of those notebook companies Look, I'm still waiting for that, Steve, but um, hopefully, you know, in the future, who knows, you know, if I write a book one day, we'll want to have those um, journals, um, yeah, supported. <laughs> hey, uh, you had that one early miss and you almost looked a little shocked. Uh, tell us how you felt in that moment. Yeah, that I was in such good shape um, that as soon as I missed that first 196, it yeah it did shock me for a moment i i recognized in that that i was taking it easy i was like you were in such good shape you know just put this amount of effort and i'm very i'm actually very thankful for that low height miss because the intensity that i that i took into the the rest of the competition really was drawn at, at that height and that was the same height that maria got the third attempt and i don't think many of us eleanor got a first attempt um, I'm pretty sure, but the rest of us, uh, it's the height that you actually have to start changing your technique. You know, you need to make sure you're getting used to staying in the air a little bit longer before you go over the bar. And uh, I think I was just taking it a bit easy. So I, it was almost just like a little, a little shock to go, hey, um, get back into it and um, keep going. What about the moment that you realise that you've definitely got a medal? um my, my head I was going for the gold medal so I I really I think if I was if I let that in I think I would have gotten the bronze or you know I wouldn't have gotten 202 I was very um in that moment it was gold or nothing and I'm very thankful for that mindset because then to get the silver afterwards is just the best but um clearing two or two meters first attempt i went back to my journal went it's not over like, i know you're going to have to jump around 204 to win because that's just the caliber of athletes so um i was i was just i was so focused and in the zone it didn't really matter to me who was left over all i, all I thought was you don't stop until you've you've jumped absolutely higher than what you could ever imagine type of thing yeah i love that answer so you didn't allow yourself to celebrate internally in any way shape or form let me ask you about Yaroslava Mahuchik who went in mm. in stellar form could you tell that she was nervous at the Olympics yeah that's the hard thing is in the competition itself we're all um we're, we're all in competition mode and then outside of the competition we weren't able to see each other because of the very strict uh, rules in the village so I hadn't really encountered um, Yaroslava until the, the competition days and she just seemed to be excited to be there as a 19 year old. And she even said that before the Olympics, she said, you know, it was my dream to go to the Olympics. So I'm just so thankful to be there. Even though she could quite easily win, she had, uh, I think she had an open mind and people say that they were surprised she didn't get the gold, but to, she skipped a 202 and then she went to 204, which is a lifetime best. To get a lifetime best in an Olympic final when you've got two girls that are also jumping very high. So for her, I think it was still an excellent performance. And for an, a teenager, she has just done so well for her country. Yeah, I've got more questions about the three of you in a few moments' time. But uh, did the Olympics, did it pan out exactly how you envisioned? Yeah, I, um, well, I said, I want to jump over two metres and be on the podium. And I, I did that. Um, of course, I think that it was a blessing in my head to think that I was a gold medal prospect. 
and even when other people didn't see it, I, I was believing that since last year. So um, to go into that mindset, in, in my head, I, I was going to be on the top of the podium. And I'm very thankful that I put my goals that high because it the way that I was training and the way that I was preparing was like a gold medal winner. So to get the silver, I think, is an enormous achievement, but it, it didn't surprise me at all. Hey, so I know that you guys, uh, yourself and your coach, Matt, you love the data and the science behind jumping. Now, you go to Germany and jump 198, come back to Australia, clear two metres, and now you do two metres on a regular basis. Like, are you surprised how quickly that transition has happened? Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I'm surprised. I, I, I cleared two metres five times this year. And uh, that consistency is, yeah, I, I think it's, it's shocked, shocked a lot of people, even including myself, because when I did 191 on the Gold Coast for the Commonwealth Games, that was a personal best. And that was only, what, 2018, we're talking three years ago. And so I'd only really gotten into the 190s quite um quite late I would say compared to most most people are teenagers when they get to 190 and then you get to two meters um you get to two meters around in your mid-20s and then um you take a few years and then you can get up to two meters plus consistently but this turnaround has been very very fast for me to to really make those those changes and and get that new barrier so um yeah I I'm, I'm amazed and at the same time still hungry for a bit more. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's, I want to talk to you about Zurich because in terms of performance, the final of the Diamond League is one of the best high jump competitions we've ever seen, including yourself narrowly missing 205. Yeah, that, it was the best female high jump competition in Diamond League history with three women over 201. Um, and I'm just like, wow, I got to be a part of that. But the 201 was quite an easy jump because uh, it's, it seems now that with my, the body shape that I have, I'm quite, I, we've managed Matt and myself to get my technique quite consistent. And then I just know how to compete at the highest levels. And I'm very in tune with, with, with what I need to do in order to get over two metres. But the 203 was, was missed narrowly. And again, I was going for the Diamond League trophy, which is gold or nothing. And um, at the same time, that, that has nothing to do with my satisfaction and all the contentment in the event, but that's the type of competitive drive I know I need. Um, so I skipped 203 and I went to the 205 and the third attempt, well, the second attempt at 205, because I skipped. Um, my last attempt was, I it just rattled and then it fell off. And I, I was just, yeah, I mean, I knew after the 201 jump was huge, it was 205 clearance. It's one thing to have it in your system, but it's another thing to um, actually execute it really well. And I knew if I did the 205 at that jump, I could potentially win the Diamonds League. And so I was very, very motivated and now that I know that that's inside of me and that's possible, it's just, it's sort of just broken that next stage and just gone, 205 is there. And if 205 is there now, what happens in a few years' time when 209, the world record, is, is just edging very close to that? Yeah, you've, you've stolen my next question because that 205, the miss must have been a light bulb moment of what's possible, not just for yourself, but for all three of you to really challenge that world record in years to come. Yeah, because we're all young. Like even Maria, like when we're we're still in our twenties, or you know, Yaroslav, and not even twenty years old yet. And a high jumper has a life expectancy of um, well, the, a career is into the mid thirties. So there's an extra ten years worth of of potentially going after that world record. Um, and yeah, it's. It's, I think we shocked, shocked ourselves, really. Even Maria, after coming out of injury and then jumping 205 at the Diamond League final, 
um, I, I'm under the personal belief that when one of us, when a few of us are jumping well, the whole competition raises. And I think even maybe we're providing the push that Maria has needed the last few years. She's attempted the world record before, but when you have a young person coming up after you and, you know, trying to take away some of the victories that you've been able to have easily, you train harder, you, you think smarter, you, um, you try and just get those little, like those extra refinements and um, it's exciting. Yeah, it's an exciting time for not only spectators, but to be a high jumper. I've loved watching you and the camaraderie you have with your fellow jumpers. And I've got a key question for you and it's about, do you think that your joy, your love and your faith has united a group of competitors who might normally be fierce rivals on and off the track? Yeah, like I, with the higher jumpers, I remember my first Diamond League in 2019 and um, Yaroslava, that was her first Diamond League win. And I noticed that all the high jumpers, what you do after you, after you finish is you just leave. And I, I was the only one there that was on the field still to cheer her on in 2019. And I said to someone, um, I said, um, I just want to change the culture that maybe by the time I win a Diamond League, nobody's leaving the competition and they're still cheering because that's important. Like, this is actually, the sportsmanship is more important than how high you jump on the day. Like, you stay and you, you make sure you're, you're there for your fellow athletes. And it, it came to Paris Diamond League and, I, and that was my first one that I won with all the girls there and no one left. Everyone stayed and they cheered me. And I just thought something that I had had an ambition for and maybe 10 years time had come two years later and um, I, I'm not too sure if I'm exactly the glue, but that there's a lot of great athletes and maybe you have to lay, lay yourself down and go, I don't mind being the one that's always talking, you know, just to try and keep us together. But um, they're a great group of girls. And that, that's also my joy is to be able to, to love them. Like you, you're, called, you're called not only just to inspire the people around you, then beat the people next to you. You're called to love the people that are right next to you and I've been I've been honored to do that and again there's it's competition rivalry but off the field we're all really really good friends and it's not just me it's it's all the high jumpers together and it's a very great community to be a part of. Hey, I know you said that um, there were strict COVID rules in Tokyo but did you meet some superstars and what were some of the events that inspired you? Yeah, so I, um, unfortunately, I was in my room most of the time. And then when I was out of my room, I was in the dining hall and whoever I saw, I saw. But um, I'm very, very good friends with a lot of the track and field athletes. So uh, to see them perform well, or I was sharing an apartment as well with Kelsey when she got the bronze medal. So the, she got the bronze medal and then I went out and I, I got the silver medal the next day. So that was really fun. Um, even surfing, Sally Fitzgibbon, uh, we have mutual friends in our family. So growing up watching her on the circuit, um, I couldn't physically be there for the event, but just to know that we're on the same team was very exciting. Someone I've always looked up to. And um, yeah, I, outside of the Olympics, so it was the first time I met Blanca Vlasic this year. And she's been my my sporting hero for high jump since I was eight years old. So um, there was a lot of people that I met on and off the circuit and the, a lot of Olympic champions and things uh, that have just really inspired me just to keep going because I know that when I meet someone that I look up to, it really is a booster and that I'm just considering maybe that's what I am to a few of the people in the future so yeah it's ex it's exciting hey uh i'm glad you got to meet blanka vlasic how exciting and uh didn't the mcdermott family set up your own satellite in tascot so you could watch it <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh I, I i don't even know but i know that tascot got um changed to mcdermott um, <laughs> with, with with after the olympics that's for sure yeah, yeah. How cool was that? Uh, I mean, and do you know who did it? I don't know, but um, I know <laughs> Task has a Facebook page and then they were all getting getting excited because there was a local in Japan. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, um, 
I know you said you went off social media, but did you notice, like, I think your followers increased like tenfold, like within a couple of days. Is that correct? Yeah. So my, my best friend now was taking over my social media. And then after I jumped in the Olympics, she said, just take it back. It's too much. And yeah, uh, with it, within a week, it, it increased over 40, over 40,000 and then it went to 50,000 and now it's at 55,000 and it's just, yeah, I, it, it was, it's just crazy just to think. Um, I think last year was around 5,000. So it's, it's encouraging because I looked at the followers and the majority of them are people in their 20s to 30s in Sydney. Um, my age and I, I I think that's even probably more heartwarming is that the people that following me are actually people that I might even run into or went to university with or people I can really reach with my story. Uh, speaking of uni, biochemistry, how close are you from being a rocket scientist? Oh, <laughs> rocket, not, no rocket science, but one exam away. So that's what I'm studying for at the moment. And um, I'm excited, you know, just for the close of a chapter, because now after this Olympics, I think there's a, a good potential that I could just focus on being a high jumper for a few years. <laughs> what does 2022 look like? Commonwealth Games, World Championships, maybe World Indoor Championships, Diamond League. It's, uh, it's a very, very big year. So the rest of this year looks like training to try and make sure I can not only maintain the form I've had, but get a new personal best for next year. Have you got a number in mind? Um, anything higher than 202 would, would be good, but um, I, I haven't actually sat down and thought about it. The Commonwealth Games record for the event is 196, and the, but the highest jump from a woman in the Commonwealth is 206. So um, yeah, I've got, I've got new goals for that. <laughs> you said about inspiring other young women in the sport. Are you looking over your shoulder? Who's coming through? Could it be the young American or Eleanor who led the Olympics and ended up finishing fifth? Like who is on their way through who could do something special? Yeah, I, there's pretty much every woman in that Olympic final is phenomenal because it was the hardest Olympics to get a final, to get into the final. You needed one metre 95 and that hasn't happened in history. So, um, yeah, pretty much all of those ones that you look at. By 2024, Paris, I think maybe two metres will be an average jump. And do you feel like your life has changed significantly? Like, I, I know how humble and grounded you are. But do you feel like something is different now you're an Olympic medalist? Um, for me personally, I mean, externally now, for sure, that like people, people actually recognise me when I'm out in public and things. But personally, I, I have the medal, but nothing has really changed. And um, the people that are closest to me treat me exactly the same, which is, is what I want. So it's... Um, it doesn't define me and I think that actually helps me keep training because silver is nice but we want gold. You were one of three Danica Clark athletes in action and yeah. two of you came home with medals the other finished top six. Three over the top six it's pretty good yeah it's um yeah I'm so thankful for the foundation really as a as a young kid because for for, for me to hear as a young kid that you'd be a silver medalist one day at the Olympics. I'd, I'd want to hope that you're telling the truth, but I'd sort of go, yeah, I don't really know. So to, to make it happen and they, they invested into me when I was that teenage kid to keep on training. I just have so much gratitude now as, as an uh, Olympic medalist because, yeah, I, those years were very formative into the success I have now even in my mindset and my habits and my commitments. So yeah, I'm very, very thankful for the help.